Welcome back to The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you. And your business got uh, Kramer still here in the studio as we continue to talk about some of the stuff we've been seeing in the news. Saw an interesting article where the uh, Prime Minister of Denmark is telling Bernie Sanders to stop disparaging his country by calling it socialist. He says it is a free market country. It is a country, of course, that has government regulations, just like the United States has. You know, and the reality is, is just to be clear, uh, the classical definition of socialism is government control or ownership of the means of production. Well, obviously, the United States is is socialist as well. And in fact, I I wrote an article a couple of years ago on how the United States uh, is spending more per capita on... um, welfare type programs than any of the European countries, any of them, including the Northern European ones. And so uh, the real, and also what the reality is, as pointed out in this interesting article uh, over there in investors business daily uh, is that the reality is, is that countries like Sweden and countries like Denmark are actually reforming, going further and further away from the old cradle to grave models towards more free market models because they simply can't afford them right. and they simply don't work and they undermine the morale and even the morality of the people that live under them. That's right. And, you know, it's amazing that uh, we are wanting to model ourselves. When I say we, I mean people like Bernie Sanders uh, want to model ourselves after a country that's a fraction of the size and yet they think that all those social programs will necessarily work the same way that they do there, here. And it's impossible. It is utterly impossible. You don't have, you know, economies of scale when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, benefit, welfare benefits and social programs and things of that nature. Uh, look, all we have to do is look at Social Security and Medicare to get a better idea of how things are really... I mean, they're barely hanging on. Yeah. Social Security especially is at the point now where, what is it, for every one person that is uh, paying into the system, they're having to take care of how many dozens of people? Yeah. It was never meant to be like that. There's no storing going on if you think there is. It's going immediately to take care of other people, and it still figures out, in some ways, to run a deficit. It's frightening, actually. It's really it's really a Ponzi scheme. Every year we hear about, or every election year, every election cycle, we hear about how, uh, especially presidential, how Social Security is going to be solvent until such a you know, year or such a you know, year. Um, it's frightening because it's not 100 years out or 200 years out. It's like five years, 10 years, 15 years out. And it's ridiculous to think that Bernie Sanders would think that Social Security and Medicare are doing so well that, hey, let's just do that to the entire country, to everything. And he's so irritating to, to listen to. He's so obviously, his philosophy is based on greed and envy. Right. You know, he sits here and talks about haves and haves nots. And it's so nauseating to listen to. You know, we live in a country where if people want to make it, regardless of what their economic circumstances are, they can make it. We live in that, in that kind of country, you know, and he wants to take us to a country that puts really a glass ceiling for everybody. You know, he says, you know, and, and he, this is Bernie Sanders. You know what? I, I, I talked to someone from Denmark, and he told me that in, in Denmark is very difficult for anyone to become very rich. But you know what? It's really difficult for anyone to become very poor, and that sounds pretty good to me. What kind of what kind of deity has he made himself into? Well, yeah, and here's a way to think about it. So it's hard to become poor. Okay, well, if you're in a church that has 50 members, right, and one person falls on hard times, the rest of them might be able to kind of help, right? They might be able to band together and really help that person out. Maybe if that church has 5,000 people and 50 people are on hard times, then the other people can band together and really help those 50 people out. And the New Testament model. When, yeah. that, when that church has got a million people and uh, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 of them are on hard times, it's a lot harder to help those people out. And when that number becomes 200,000 or 300,000 people are on hard times, it's impossible for the rest of them to help them out Mm -hmm. without themselves being dragged down into that level. And so while it's all great to think of, you know, society helping those at the very bottom, uh, not get any further down in life, it's, it's unrealistic to make it a system where there can be no losers because in that system, there really can be no winners either. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
and uh, and I, I find and the, it... the possibility of being a winner is the epitome of the American dream itself. Yeah, but when you're a winner in in Bernie Sanders' world, you're to be vilified. Exactly. I don't want to live in that world. I don't either. Yeah. I'm already enough of a loser. I don't need uh, Bernie Sanders to force the issue. <laughs> loser. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, speaking at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, the center-right Danish Prime Minister Lars Locke Rasmussen said he was aware, quote, that some people in the U.S. associate the Nordic model with some sort of socialism. Therefore, he said, I would like to make it make one thing clear. Denmark is far from a socialist planned economy, Denmark is a market economy. Meaning, meaning Bernie Sanders has has been modeling uh, or telling these people that he's wanting to model the U.S. after them because they're a democratic socialist, and they're saying, "No, no, no! Hey, hold on now! Wait a second! No, we're not! Stop! Stop using that language! Stop! Yeah, it's interesting." We'll have to add that Sweden, another of Sanders' inspirations, has for decades, and this is so true, quietly moved away from its cradle-to-grave form of government welfare. And the Swedes are better off for having done so, just as the Danes will continue to be better off as their government overhauls its welfare state. Frankly, the United States is a dinosaur. It's literally following models that other parts of the world have proven do not work. The lumbering dinosaur, and we keep picking the models to follow, such as Canada's health care, UK's uh, health care, and then other cradle-to-grave type situations in, like you said, uh, Scandinavian countries, folks, they're moving away from those. Yeah. And so for us to want to blindly follow, yeah, we're like, we're like uh, the Fashion Week in New York City, Paris, Milan, and we're in like, uh, you know, I don't know, West Plains, Missouri. Yeah. And... When that fashion has long, long gone out of fashion in Milan and Paris and in New York, guess what? West Plains, Missouri is just now getting it in. And that's the U.S. We're wanting to follow the uh, the you know already discarded uh, models, economic models and social models of these other countries. We're a laughing stock for doing that. New York Times, not exactly a bastion of free market economics, writes in an article: Danes rethink a welfare state. Ample to a fault. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, as an example, again, it's like two ships passing through the night, you know, and the, and the U.S. is going towards something that that other ship, which is Europe, Europe is trying to get away oh, from. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking more along the lines of us, the Titanic, hitting the iceberg. That's where... <laughs> That's where that's that's more where we're going. And his name of that that iceberg is, is Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Feel the berg. Feel the berg. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, interesting conversation. I'm going to be writing about this without a doubt over you at uh, usdataReview.com and Huffington Post. I'll be getting some stuff over there. Uh, plus, uh, you know, I want to encourage people to check out usdatareview.com. That thing is expanding in its reach over uh, 3,500 now. Uh, follow it on Facebook, and I encourage you to be among those. Back with more after this.